Oh, so we are live. Hi guys, welcome to the SEO Career Mastery with SEO for Hire. Uh, today we are bringing on Anthony Barone, is the co-founder of Studio Hawk. How are we, Anthony? Very well, very well. Good to be here. Good to see Excited. you. Excited? Oh, mate, always. <laughs> Good to hear. Good to hear. Um, but we'll get straight into it. So, Anthony, you started off, I remember speaking to you, I think, was it down at Brighton? Um, and you started off, you told me, tell me you were a bar manager, was it five or six years ago? And now, all of a sudden, you're a co-founder of one of the most successful SEO agencies in the Australia and in the UK. So how, how did that happen? What was the, the story? Mate, quick story. So, yeah, I did six years in hospitality um, from 20, 2012 to 2018. Um, while I was working at Studio Hawk, I was still working at a nightclub um, on the weekend. So I was putting like six, six and a half day weeks then. Um, so my thought process, so I got introduced to Harry by a mutual friend. And Harry at the time, who's the original founder of Studio Hawk when he started at 17, was like, hey, need a junior SEO and I had no idea what the hell SEO was um, and I was like okay that's digital that's online that's going to be around for the next 10 years and I'm not going to be in the bar forever yeah. um, so I thought this is a good opportunity to do something new without having to re-go to, to, to go to uni and to do all that again so I'm like okay this is great so as a second hire there worked under Harry took about six months to really get a solid understanding of what SEO is um, a lot of trial and error a lot of reading a lot of failures um, but got there in the end. And at the end of 2018, we'd gone from just Harry and I to 11 and 100 clients. And then when I left Studio Hawk, when I left Australia um, to start Studio Hawk UK, we had um, about 13, 14 people, 150 odd clients. Um, and then I came here in August of 19 to start Studio Hawk UK. So, and now we've got a team of all soon to be nine and um, 70 odd clients here in the UK. But I really just fell into it. It was more just like a leap of faith. Like, hey, I'm not going anywhere with this hospitality sort of role. Mm -hmm. I can't keep going on with this forever. This is an opportunity that I'm not going to get anywhere else to like learn from, learn under Harry. And now it's turned into employee to business owner um, sort of story over the last five years, five and a half years. So it's Brilliant. been an awesome ride and we, we keep on going. Obvious. Yeah, uh, just two follow-up sort of questions on that. Um, so did you realize how niche SEO was in the terms of the sort of wider digital marketing scale when you first started or was it just completely new to you? Completely new to me. I didn't know that there was a, like a business behind getting things to the top of Google. Like that's yeah. how like, um, like I knew so little about SEO that I didn't even bring my laptop to my first day at Studio Hawk because I didn't know it was done. Like I didn't know it was done online. Like I, I brought like, I printed off the Moz beginner's guide to SEO in a binder folder and I bought my pen and highlighter and I went to Harry. I'm like, I'm ready to go. And he's like, where's your laptop? I'm like, what are you talking about? So yeah, my first day, I ended up just like reading through the printed Moz guide that I bought um, and then bought my laptop the next day. <laughs> yeah, thankfully. Nice. thankfully. Yeah. Um, and then the second question was, obviously you said you moved over to the UK to start up the UK office. Is it? Did you say 11 people now at the minute? In the UK so not, nine or? in the UK. Um, nine. Yeah, nine in the UK. And it's been, it's been good fun. 70 odd clients from a range of backgrounds. I started off just me, one man band with no idea, no clue, never started a business before, 18 months in SEO, coming into the, one of the most competitive markets, client side, agency side. Um, you're going up against some of the best and brightest minds in SEO. So in-house, you've got some of the biggest, like people who work in-house are switched on, smarter, big brands, big cash. So yeah, yeah it's no easy, like not an easy marketplace, very competitive. So what was the, the selling point then to get people to join Studio Hawk and join you on that sort of startup adventure? I think we were lucky because we'd done it before in Australia. So we'd proven the, the, the concept. So when I hired my first two people in October of 20, it was like no one was really hiring then. It was Corona, people looking mm -hmm. for a job. So I'm like, hey, this is an opportunity where we build you from the ground up. So we started three days a week, part-time teach you the skills and we've got some really good core people that are, that are with us today um, that were able to take that opportunity and run with it. And it just came down to timing for those, for those, for at that time, for those two. Um, mm -hmm. And then from then on, it's still like, we're a, we're a small business looking to grow. We've done it in Australia. We're 50 people in Australia. Um, there's an opportunity here to get into the ground floor with Studio Hawk in the UK um, mm -hmm. and be able to build a life and a career with Studio Hawk um, through the power of SEO really. So, yeah, it's, it's sort of like selling that vision and getting people along for the ride of like, hey, you know, we're still young. You, a lot of these guys here, 20, 24, 25, 26, got barely getting started. 
So yeah. to have that opportunity to be like, look, I can build a life and a career here, which is what I've been able to, lucky enough, been able to do. I'd like to give that sort of opportunity to, to them as well. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, obviously you fell in the SEO and you've probably hit brick walls along the way. So what was the aspect of SEO that kept you going? Into, uh, with SEO, I, so my first six months are pretty challenging. I didn't actually, because uh, I wasn't that technical. I, hadn't, I wasn't really a computer nerd or knew much about it. So it was more understanding like how things work. So I really started with like the, the way we do it is sort of like the Mr. Miyagi method of like giving certain tasks out. And then before, and then after a certain period of time, you are, oh, I get how technical flows into content, flows into this. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, the brick wall came for me probably the technical side where I was just like jumping into a website and learning how these things work and what does this mean and what does that mean? So mm -hmm. the technical stuff, because um, I, I got my head around keyword research and the content relatively straightforward, but it was the technical, technical aspect and how it all matched up. But honestly, it took probably six months. If you look at some of my like early work, if I want to pull that up in the drive in terms of like the, the audits I did, like I thank yeah. Harry because he would have fixed up a lot of them um, in those early days because I just had no idea. But mm -hmm. trial, tribulation, like learning, reading from other SEOs, learning what Harry had done. Yeah, it was a lot of, it was a fair few brick walls. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, in terms of um, moving over to the UK, how was the, what is the SEO industry like in Australia? And did you face any sort of challenges, um, I guess, maybe culturally or in the industry itself um, when moving over to the UK? Okay, so the, I'd say the UK is more aware of SEO and they're more willing to try the uh, digital marketing. There's bigger, mm -hmm. there's bigger brains, bigger money, sharper people, I would say. Australia's a bit more laid back, chill, probably, you know, um, say nine, 12 months behind the UK, um, which okay. is usually the go for most, most sort of things. Um, mm. Yeah, it's a bit more, a bit more chill. But then the flip side is you get a lot of people who are like, you just go and do it. I trust you guys. You guys know what you're doing. Go. Mm. Um, which works sometimes and doesn't work in other times. But I'd say yeah. the UK is a much more mature market. Um, agencies, smarter, better, bigger, um, much more money. You've got in-house who are getting big brands with big cash who can hire good people. So yeah, UK is much more mature market culturally. Very similar, you know. You can yeah. you, know, okay. you can take a joke with Aussies and Brits, and <laughs> it's, pretty, it's oh, for me. It's been pretty yeah. pretty. I'm glad I came here rather than say going to the US or anywhere else. Like the the cultural similarities have been great. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, I, I'd say UK is just so much more, so much bigger, and so much more mature. Awesome. Excellent. And uh, sort of now, because obviously you've went through the ranks, uh, do you still like getting hands-on SEO? Like I can see in your profile, you like lo local SEO, or are you more client-facing delegation <laughs> now? Yeah, so I I jumped off the tools probably six six plus months ago. Um, so I've got the team now that carries out the SEO. So my, my role is probably pivoting to more day-to-day -day operations, sales and marketing, and like the culture. Um, but I still mm -hmm. will help out with ideas. I still help out with strategy. I will still help out with, um, I go to client meetings. I do all that stuff. So while I'm not doing the data day reports, I still know a bit, of, a bit about SEO here and there. But the team, <laughs> the team are getting better than me. So um, yeah, I leave, a lot of the, I leave a lot of that stuff to them now and just uh, empower them and trust them to, to, to take that and run with it. But yeah, I'm still there for advice and guidance, but it's more yeah. of a working on, like an orchestrator working on the business instead of in, in it. Brilliant. Um, I know you mentioned previously that you have still a few people who were out there from the start still with you guys. Um, we know from working with yourselves as a client as well, you have like a great career roadmap that people can clearly see where they're going to be in the next sort of two years, four years, etc. Is there anything along with like sort of the hands-on experience? Is there like two or three personality traits that you're also keeping an eye out if those people sort of have as well? Um, for me, it's been like, a never say die attitude and like really loving a challenge because like with seo it's always changing so like you, you there's all you can't just rest on your laurels so you've got to have someone who's proactive and inquisitive and investigative to be like um because the answer might not always be the answer depending on the cms depending on the client depending on how it's built there's so much that goes into seo so yeah there are a couple of qualities investigative inquisitive proactive really loves a challenge excellent Excellent. Pass that on to a few candidates. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And just stepping away from that, obviously in Studio Hawk, you've got the resources like Tea Time Tips and stuff like that. Uh, where did you come up with the, the academy side of it? Why did you come up with that idea? Yeah, so that was that was all. Harry worked up very, very hard. So the original iteration was of that was quite basic. 
where like even I did a few videos and then Harry was like, look, we can really turn this into something in terms of being an education for clients, for our, our future staff, but also like doing potential partnerships with universities and things like that. So sort of scrapped my videos and some of the stuff that I did and Harry went to, went to town on really building a nice, put a lot of time and money and effort into building a nice yeah. Orc Academy platform. So that's been an absolute wonder and we tend to give, you know, we give that with, away to every client that works with us um you know it goes from basic to advanced seo videos modules quizzes you get to see harry everywhere um so yeah it's been a, that one's been a real good one tea time tips is more of like a um you know sort of like linkedin post order almost like an email newsletter mm-hmm. where it's like here's a couple of tips but the hawk academy one is like if you've got a junior um in your business or you want to learn more about seo you can jump on that and it's pretty much got all the cool things you need yeah it's definitely a good idea anywhere it's unique yeah. Um, in terms of that culture how do you progress that because obviously the team's getting bigger how do you make sure that you still maintain that sort of strong culture like because it's also going to get harder the more people you sort of bring under to maintain that sort of thing yeah this is a challenge probably get, you, you go through as you scale like i'm trying that's why i want like i'm pivot like pivoting my role to try and focus more on that stuff so whether it's team events or whether it's giving them autonomy or whether it's trying to help them in their personal development or professional development so i asked the team like what are some of the things you want to do okay you want to travel so i want to come up with some idea what what are some perks that i could potentially add that will help them with their travel Mm. um you know they want to go away how how can i help that um obviously team events are always good you don't have to always go to the pub so like um we go to like last night went out to dinner um i've done bowling before done darts like those types of things where you can all just get away from work and just trying to do that because we're still small um you know you can try and do those things when you get to 15 or 20 that's when you have a bit more of an organized sort of you'd have your 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 people or culture or something in there or or office Mm -hmm. manager or something like that um to be able to do to be able to help you out with that at the moment it's just me so i'm just trying to do like um get some merch on get some merch down um help out with like um getting a hr on board so yeah with the culture stuff it's, it is in flux but i try and i try and do what i can but i'm you know i'm no i'm no nike <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and when you sort of bring people on um so yeah, as you get sort of grow up the scale and stuff will you start hiring for sort of senior level people or will you sort of keep the same strategy of bringing them in junior and training them up through the culture and through the program um i think yeah it'll come a point where you have to just get senior talent especially if you you got the rank you start getting bigger clients mm-hmm. um you just you just need that talent like you'll need that senior talent just come in they just know what they're doing and then go from there um but for us in the uk we'll probably keep going with our junior junior route for a little while um obviously you know if we end up you know working with some big big clients then yeah things change but um with our trajectory the the we've got a good solid core of core team now who i can trust and empower so now it's filled up with junior talent to then let my team who are already here continue to progress up and up and up um Mm -hmm. and then have juniors being able to take that take that grunt work I was going to say, do you have like, I don't know if you're allowed to say, but do you have like a projection of where you want sort of the numbers to be at by the end of the year or this time next year? <laughs> Honestly, I, <laughs> I don't want to start I, giving I, away I, the trade secrets. No, 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 I, for me, I, when I came here, I thought, oh, okay, it'll be great to be the biggest. Mm-hmm. So, you know, be great to be like Blue Ray and all that. Yeah. But yeah. I've also kept an eye, like, I, I like Kevin Gibbon, Gibbons from ReSignal. And I've seen what he's done. I'm like, yeah, that's that's a nice thing to emulate. Well, you don't have to go mm. big, but you're one of the best. Um, mm. So I probably changed, like personally, I probably changed, like sort of my attitude in terms, of, like you're just got to be the biggest. But biggest isn't <laughs> yeah. necessarily the best. So yeah, I've I really, you know, got respect for Kevin over there at ReSignal because of what he's done. So I think I've probably skewed more, more, more that way. But for us, it's um, we're probably looking to end the year on nine people next year try and hit 100 clients Mm -hmm. um and then just go from there bit by bit but yeah excellent we'll see what happens honestly i i take it day by day man (laughs) (laughs) and that seo for hire because obviously we speak to candidates day and day out quite a big big thing that's brought up is maybe execs or specialists and they're looking to sort of progress into the seo managerial role whether it be you know over people or over accounts you, is there a few traits that you see within Studio Hawk that uh, sort of make a good manager stand out? 
I would say would that that like that junior SEO to like sort of more senior SEO sort of jump. Yeah, exactly um, the jump. For me, anyone like you can teach anyone the tasks. Like, you know, you can teach them the core things of SEO. The next step to be for me to be that sort of senior is how to strategically apply that. If you can go here, go do fifty titles. Great, they're the best titles ever. Awesome. You fixed up all these broken links and great. But it's understanding the pillars of SEO and how important they are to a business. And then when you're doing a game plan, where to fit that in. And then throwing in mm. the client themselves and the client challenges and the client restraints and the client boundaries and maybe the, re- mm. the, the what they've got. So it's that strategic level. How does how important is technical SEO for their for their well, technical SEO, SEO is always important. But okay, yeah. for example, technical SEO is very important. But what what are the core things that we could sort of do ourselves? Because the client's got limited resources. So what do we need to do to move the needle? Great. Is um, fixing up the privacy policy page going to be as important? No. But you know, being able to fix up above the fold content on these core category pages is. So it's thinking strategically um, and being able to then communicate that to the client. That's what I, like for me, that's how I grew. And I like I got the mm-hmm. core elements of SEO, great, but it's how to apply that to a business and make yeah. it make them understand and make the impact. Brilliant, brilliant. And in terms, okay. I know you do a lot of sort of interviewing and stuff yourself, obviously both in the UK team and a bit for the Australian team as well. Has there been a best interview that really sort of stands out for you and why was that? It was one of our one of our current SEO specialists. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't name them, but like <laughs> um, just the timing of it, the personality, the fit. Um, when we had so the way we do it is we'll do a video call in the trial day. Video call went su- like super well. Liked them, liked like like their resume, great. Had like some of the experience, like they would worked in retail, they worked in this, they worked in that. You know, they had a, you know a bit older. Um, and just taking all those taking all those sort of experiences, they just had the determination, the drive. Like you could like you could see it, you could feel it, um, and it's proven to be an absolute um, winner. So they're they you know they're smashing it. Um, so yeah, that was probably one of the best. Where like I wanted to, I honestly wanted to hire. Like we have a trial day, and we have the trial day to like get a feel for it. Is this right for you? Is this right for us? This is the, some of the stuff you're going to do, and like. Mm-hmm. Mate, I wanted to like hire them at like nine AM when they rocked up. So it was um <laughs> yeah, it was that was one of the that was one of the better ones, yeah. How did he convey the determination to sort of curiosity? It was it like man. it was it was the personality. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. their their personality was infectious. It's that sort of um the desire to do well, pride in your own name, pride in your work. Like if your name is stamped on something, you want people to read that name and go, That's quality. So mm-hmm. yeah, and um you can see that now with the way they deal with clients and and things like that. So, yeah, that was very good. Brilliant. Awesome. And just yeah, on the know. topic of clients, oh, oh, do you want? Yeah, just no, on the no, topic of clients, sir. So, so you've worked with SMEs and larger size enterprises as well. So, with our candidates, we have some people who are maybe on in house and they're going into agency and they're going to be working with a load of SMEs. Have done before, and vice versa. You have people who have worked with SMEs and they're going into the enterprise side of it. Do you have any tips just to give someone that's entering one of them types of industries and businesses? Because obviously they're very different in regards yeah. to size. Is there any like key factors or key tips that you could? <laughs> With SME someone- business, yeah, with SME businesses, there's always there's going to be challenges everywhere. Whether it's resources, whether it's communication, whether it's getting buy-in. Um, so sometimes in SME business, like if you're working with an SME business or for an SME business, they're just not going to have the resources, or they'll they'll know they need SEO, but they don't actually know what that means. Mm-hmm. So the communication will be key, and this is what I mentioned before about the strategic understanding of SEO and how to match that up with their business goals. The better you can do that, the better the founders or the stakeholders can understand what the hell it is you do. And they go, yes, this is great. I understand it because you're speaking in their language, essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're singing from the same hymn sheet, which is mm-hmm. going to you know, take a lot of work to sing from that same hymn sheet. But once you can, you can get things done or they'll trust you more and you start bringing in results. Oh, hey, this is time bringing in results. We can hire more or get you that get you that tool that you need or laptop or whatever it may be. So SME business, yeah, there's always going to be challenges, mostly on the communication and resource side um, because things just can't get done. So you have to be strategic and prioritize. Enterprise level, it's almost like the other way. There's just so many stakeholders and so many um, block blockers that you just can't get anything done. So you're spending a lot more time on communication, on, um, you know, business plan, 
what's a can you come up with we want to fix up all these page titles for all these categories and you're talking with like a you know seven eight figure sort of e-com um yeah. you need to almost come up like there's been times when we'd have to come up with like a plan for the internal team just so they could sell it to the stakeholders oh, really? because the stakeholders won't believe the internal team so they need to get an agency and be like this is what like we need to do this so that happens but I understand why, because enterprises are so big. There's so many levels of yeah. decision-making, bureaucracy. You know, they've got any really important, like the website is a big core part of their um, marketing. You can't just let anyone just start playing around with it. So I understand why it is. But for me, it'd be a lot of communication. There's a lot of presentations. There's a lot of like back and forths just because of the levels of stakeholders and decisions. Yeah, the chain of command. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking about SMEs, uh, you gave such an awesome, um, incredible speech at SEO Exclusive as well. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I just wanted to bring up um, events and the importance of it. And um, uh, yeah, how do you sort of see the beneficial aspect of it for your company and maybe for your teammates as well? Um, and uh, yeah, do you prioritize it? Um, I like I like events. I like you know everyone everyone absolutely you know maybe hate public speaking and you get nervous and it's not great. But once you start doing it more and more, you realise hey this is actually awesome because they're hearing from you and you're able to like. So what I pride myself on when I'm doing that is can I give these people actionable um, tips and advice about SEO? Mm. Do they know more walking out than them when they when they walked in? Um, especially with SEO because it's an industry with a lot of misinformation myths and the usual when you know, everyone thinks it's voodoo magic when it's not it's a lot of hard work mm -hmm. but it's not rocket science mm -hmm. so with the events and with any speaking gig that i could do it's just can i provide advice and tips and guidance and actionable stuff that people can then use and thought hey that's actually pretty good i'll i'll i've used that and that's great that's that's all if somebody takes one thing away and they implement it and it works great do you yeah, leverage events in terms of sort of not like publicity but like yeah pretty much publicity for studio hawk and trying to bring on either bring on talent for yourselves or bring on new clients um australia more so they've got more of the team um to be able to do that in terms of head of head of my, um head of bd and growth mm -hmm. and harry and they've got all that so they do leverage trade shows and more speaking events and things like that um we're trialing um with a friend of a couple of friends of mine we've got two separate events that we try and do um, which is the you know, agency social club in London tech meetup, which is two like two quite different sort of um, customer customer like customers are trying to go after there, but they give us an opportunity to one for the agencies, so we can either do speaking events or just networking and meet more agencies and build friends. And the the tech one um, is more like networking, a bit more formal, a bit more CEOs, founders, heads of sort of sort of thing. And then honestly, we're really using them just to build up build up the network. We we run the event, so it's in our backyard that people can hang out with us. And and if we get a chance to speak and people get to listen to us, then yeah, it opens up the door for potential conversations and leads down the line. But yeah. it's not. It's just something that I've just been dabbling in at the moment. Um, I think as we grow and scale and we get towards sort of like Australian numbers, then yeah, we'll be able to have more resource to dedicate to to events and stuff. But like, went mm -hmm. to Brighton, try and take the team to Brighton, spoke to Brighton. Um, you know, spoke with you guys, SF for Hive. There's opportunities like that. Great. Um, but yeah, for our events, we're just trialing those, those, those two at the moment and we try and get three or four of those each year. Brilliant. Was, do you have like a, a preference of event, like say the likes of like a Brighton SEO or do you prefer more sort of mastermind events where it's a bit of a smaller crowd, but maybe more decision makers involved? See, I'm a bit different. So like I will go with, I will go with like a fun activity. So like I will go for like you put you put a bunch of people in a room playing darts or pool or, astro <laughs> yeah, or, or something. And honestly, you don't even think about business. Yeah. But you just literally like start getting to know people as friends and just hang out. Because sometimes yeah. like with events or like with people who are working, you know, day jobs or running businesses, you're you're always thinking of business. You're always you're, when you go to a networking event, you're there for business. I've got to get business. I've got to get business. Yeah. But if you just literally like chill out, like I did a whiskey tasting one time. <laughs> really drink this. Yes. don't really like it but i had we had about 20 founders there everyone everyone had a cracking night and not mm -hmm. like it was just it was just something different yeah. so um yeah i'm a bit different i like probably do more of an activity sort of cool thing that regular like regular people like us wouldn't do all the time um mm -hmm. but in terms of like networking events i don't mind like listening to people especially like really good things to say like i'm really intrigued with like 
I know I'm going to speak to this. I'm going to listen to this person. I'm going to get something out of it. I do like Brighton. Brighton for me is um, you get some good SEO insights, and I, I'm, but also I get to catch up with a few friends that I've made in the SEO community here. So at this stage of my journey, I'd say Brighton SEO for me is about catching up with those friends and SEO people in the community. Um, but yeah, one bit of some, bit of the other. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Darcy, you want to uh, ask first? I'm, I was just going to say, you mem- I remember you touched on, just because you mentioned Brighton again, and I know they're moving into the US now, they're starting up at Brighton SEO in America. I know you said you were glad you came to the UK and set up the likes of America, but is there in, I don't know, maybe the next five, ten years, any sort of idea of breaking into the American market or trying your luck there? Um. Not for me personally. I love the UK and, and Europe, and I think that this this is my home for the long term. Studio Hook overall, I think there would be, um, mm-hmm. for sure. But yes. going into the US is no easy feat. It's got to be a measured. Um, if you're looking at a lot of finder, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like you can't just go into the US and go, yeah, I'm going to be the biggest in the US because they will eat you alive. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I think it's taking a, a calculated uh, decision, doing your research, picking your city, um, and you've got to go in there with. Not all guns blazing because the Americans are, they got bigger guns than you, the way they are. Like, yeah. So you've, yeah, you've really got to be measured. So I think over the next five years, definitely Studio Hawk will, will be looking to at least make a mark there. But we know that it, you're going to have, it's going to have to be calculated and measured. You just can't go Better. in blazing because you will fail. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to round off with a little bit of a positive um, motivational question. Um, if anyone is um, looking into uh, taking up SEO or just starting off and don't have that much experience yet or exploring and wanting to get into SEO, do you have any advice for them? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, the, it's the attitude. Like for me, it's the, it's the attitude. It's, it's the, because with SEO, it's always constantly changing. You can't just like, sit there and go, I read the Moz guide in 2017 and that's it. So it's yeah. constant learning, constant appetite for learning, um, reading, understanding the, the, the why behind things is, is always good, understanding the purpose, um, the determination, having determination to like never never pass up a challenge because um, mm-hmm. in SEO you'll be faced with challenges, whether that's Google throwing them at you, whether it's the client, whether it's the CMS, whether it's the team. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, constantly educating yourself. Um, and learning from others because there's a bunch of SEOs out there who are, who are pretty good and they're trialing and doing cool stuff all the time. Um, mm. get, get around that. So, yeah, that's for me, that's sort of how I did and some of the advice that I try and instill is th- a couple of those things. Um, again, just in terms of for recruitment purposes and for our, our sort of candidates, um, I know you mentioned personality is a big thing on the calls and obviously determination and stuff like that, but when you're looking at a CV, is there anything that attracts you? A lot of our clients are really keen to see like personal projects that candidates are doing on the side. Is there mm-hmm. something that really stands out that you look for? Um, obviously, like you've got to have some sort of aptitude there. Like, you know, you can't get like a room temperature IQ. But like, um, <laughs> it's, yeah, personality fit is one. I'd say, again, it's the attitude. Having a great attitude to, to work get comfortable being uncomfortable because it's going to be challenges thrown your way. Um, resilience, things are not, things are not going to go right. You might break a website. Client might be mean to you. Happens. Um, <laughs> desire to, yeah. Desire to learn and accepting challenges. So I, I get the side projects thing um, where it's just like it showcases that extra determination and like, you know, you, you're, you've trialed it yourself, which is a bit of like, which is what SEO is. Like, yeah. that's, always, that's always great where like, you could read all about SEO, right? But until you actually jump into a website and to speak to clients, it's not going to work. Same thing as like you could read all about football, but you're not going to kick like Beckham. Yeah, so, exactly. um, yeah, <laughs> very, like, it's, it's, the, it's the application of that. Yeah. Yeah, big time because I, I actually started to start up one of my affiliate sites and I looked at it. And I had my head, I didn't know even where to start, to be honest with you. Like, I <laughs> you thought I knew a good, a good enough bit, but um, yeah, I didn't know where to get going, to be honest. Right, yeah. That puts you in a position to put a fire fire under you to learn because you've got to. Um, that's why, like, I, yeah, the side projects make you know make, make sense. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, I might have to check out the, the Hawk Academy actually. Is that just online? online? Is it or where do yeah, you online? Mate. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up with that. Brilliant, brilliant. Appreciate Pop it. it in. Yeah, but that uh, I think wraps up our half an hour. Um, 
we're just hitting just before the half an hour mark but uh, yeah thank you so much um anthony for coming on and chatting to us um and uh yeah your again talk was so great at seo exclusive that we just wanted you, to bring you back on again <laughs> yeah we're hard to chat a bit more and learn that. a bit more so um yeah this talk was great and um yeah we really appreciate it and all the best and, thank you very uh, much thanks for your time thanks for we'll your time Anthony. Oh, that's nothing. thank you Appreciate yeah. it. Cheers. Have a good weekend. <laughs> you too. Oh, the awkward bit where.